Welcome back, everybody, to another episode in the Miano Restomon series. So, we've done a lot of stuff with the interior of the car, but now we're going to do a few final details. As I mentioned in the past, uh, this car does not have a radio of any kind, and I didn't want to go with kind of, uh, you know, a standard type of radio system, messing up the look of this sort of sort of retro type of thing that's going on. And so I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to put in something that was kind of like a headless style of audio system, basically just something to attach to a Bluetooth device like my phone, because that's how I listen to music and didn't really care about radio. Don't care about any kind of other connectivity CDs or whatever. Um, and, um, be able to, uh, have something simple that looks good in the car and it doesn't mess with the aesthetic. Uh, so this is what I decided to do. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this setup. So in the middle here with the blinking blue light is our amplifier board and it consists of two one, two, uh, Texas Instruments TPA 3116D2 amplifier chips. And these chips are actually, uh, they're really small, but they're very, very powerful. They're very durable. They can output up to two channels of 50 watts each. And this has been measured by multiple people uh, doing like, um, you know, amplifier dynos and things like that. And this is real wattage. This is not your fake side of the box of an amplifier wattage. Um, this is the actual wattage without clipping or distortion. And um, they can actually do quite a bit for how small they are. Now, it may be hard to get a gauge of this, but this is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, this particular board. And there are quite a few boards out there like this that use this and so what happens is uh, various manufacturers mostly in China will get these chips and they will build something that has some sort of feature set now this one in particular it came from a US shipper because I wanted to get it quickly I didn't want to wait three weeks but um, this one's kind of interesting because it has uh, Bluetooth 5.0 which is nice it has a number of high and low pass filters, these knobs, uh, as well as uh, different types of like a main channel volume control, a bass channel volume control, and a master. Um, and as you can see, this one, uh, since it has two chips, it can support a left and a right normal speaker as well as a bass channel. So it's a 2.1 style amplifier. So this type of board, I think I, I spent about 30 bucks for it, 35 bucks, and you can get it as low as like 15 or 20, it's crazy. Um, here I've got an old PC power supply. These are super um, useful to use after the PC has lived a good life and uh, is super slow and stuff like that and you're retiring it and you're just gonna ditch the components and you know, throw it into e-waste or whatever. Um, all you have to do is unplug the main plug that goes into the motherboard. And you'll see right here, a little jumper. And if you look, it's the green wire, which is the, you can remember it as the go wire, uh, the power wire to, or the power available wire to basically any ground. So right next to it is a black, wire any black wire is ground so you can just jumper the green to any black and you will get that and then that means you don't have to have an actual switch um, this is a protection mechanism that basically you plug it into the uh, thing but um, even though it has power connected to the back and there may or may not be a switch on the back uh, the switch on the front of the computer has to be toggled for this to work so that's what that's what this is about all power supplies manufactured in the last 20 years work like this. So that's all you have to do. So what I've got is all you have to do is probe for a particular on all these cables, just probe for something that's 12 volt. So I found one here and what that's gonna do 
is this going to go to this guy? So this guy is a voltage up converter. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but basically what it does is it takes 12 volts and turns it into 24 volts. Now it doesn't do that for free. It's going to take some amps uh, to do that. And so you're going to you, you limit yourself a little bit, which is why I mentioned the amps over here. But that's it's still more than enough we got left. Um, and then it's going to give 24 volts to this guy. Now this guy can actually work fine on anything from 12 to 25 or 26 volts. Um, so you can just connect it directly to the battery power in your car. But what this also does is it does some voltage regulation. This is going to be a steady, very steady 24 volts. And by upping the voltage, we can lower the amperage. You remember that volts times amps is what gives you watts. So that's how you get your watts. If you have higher voltage, you don't need to use as high a current, which is the amps. And that can produce less heat over here on this thing. You see these heat sinks, but we really don't want to stress it. All right, next up, some speakers. So these are some mid-range two-way speakers. Uh, they're just coaxial. They're not component. Um, so the signal is feeding into a thing on the back and it is splitting into the tweeter section and the you know the mid-range section and just because these mid-range sounds better when it's in some sort of enclosure i worked up a little enclosure out of some cardboard boxes and just made a hole slipped them in there put the wires through and we've got our little mini enclosure to make it sound a little bit better uh, it's not really necessary. These are some Polk speakers. I'll put the actual uh, model number right here, but they're fairly well regarded in the Miata community. They are also IPS certified, IP certified. So I think they're IP56, uh, and which means that they are resistant to jets of water. So they're not fully immersive, uh, but they are billed as a marine level uh, speaker system like for on your boat meaning marine is, is you, you can have these on your boat or something so they will work just fine in the door you do get a certain amount of water in the door of a Miata or any door really so you do want to have some protection for it but with these uh, they are the protection is built in so this guy is a Rockville 8 inch amp I'll put the model number up it's very inexpensive it seems to work very well and you know it's not going to give you door rattling bass but it does fill out the sound very nicely in the low you know basically 150 hertz and below so it fills it out gives you depth uh makes these little guys work a lot you know sound a lot fuller and everything like that now i could have made uh, an enclosure for a regular sub just bought a raw sub built an enclosure of some sort that would fit and that's definitely an option too a lot of people especially in the Miata community make a floor sub they'll make a trunk sub they'll do something like that but i you know this isn't an audio car i didn't want to add weight really um all i wanted was something small very very small these this is crazy small look how small this is um this is like less than three inches in depth so this is going to fit right behind the seat and it's going to be perfect um, we're just going to hook this up uh, it'll make it so that it stresses this less so the 100 watt channel doesn't really have to produce 100 watts because it's it's basically going to be um, line level as opposed to speaker level it's going to be down converted to that but um, so that'll make this run a little bit cooler so all this kind of goes together all right, this is not soldered up yet, but this is what we've got so far. Let's so let's start over here. Um, this is going to be attached directly to the battery. It's going to clip on to uh, bolt down to the um, terminal, the positive terminal. We got a 30 amp fuse. That's going to go into the 30 amp connector of our relay pigtail, and then it's got its own ground. And then the load, which is at the top of the relay is um, going to the load the input of our voltage converter 
And then we've got, that also has its own ground, which is gonna to connect to the same place that this is, which is to the chassis. And then it's got two wires going off here for the output. These will connect to the wires going up to the front of the car. And then finally, we have this one, which is gonna to connect to the white wire going up to the front of the car, which is where the switch is gonna be. So this controls the relay. It's gonna provide power when the switch is on and no power when the switch is off, which will turn on and off the relay, which will supply power to the voltage converter, which will supply 24 volts to the front of the car. Oh, one last thing. It's a good idea to add another fuse to the output as well. So the amp is only gonna drive um, need 10 amps so this is going to be a 10 amp fuse right here all right so now we're going to get a little bit of soldering in um, I've got this little uh, butane powered soldering gun which is new I've never used it before so we'll see how it goes all right so I'm going to get started here tin the uh, tip I've got a chiseled tip this particular one comes with a few different tips for soldering and it also comes with a hot knife uh, blade that you can screw onto here. This butane stuff is something I've wanted for a while. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty nice not having wires. Um, you can see I'm struggling here a bit with uh, the solder that it came with. <laughs> yeah, it's non-leaded solder. I hate that stuff. And I'm switching to a leaded solder. Normally I like a 60/40 rosin core solder. It's got the flux built in. Uh, this is not that but it is leaded and it's working a bit better um, if you've seen some of my other videos where I deal with electronics you know that uh, I do like to solder um, that I like it better than the crimp on you know type of uh, connectors and uh, if you do it correctly it is definitely a good way to go it produces a really clean don't get me wrong you can do fine with crimp on connectors but um, soldering is also perfectly acceptable as well and if you do what's called Lyman splice where you um, put the two leads together and wrap them around each other it, it gives you a nice mechanical connection as well as an electrical connection all right well that worked pretty well this is what it is I'll leave a link for it. All right, back up to the front of the car. Apologize for the fan noise. It is about 110 degrees in my garage. Kind of need it. Uh, so we've got our switch. And um, as you can see, we've got uh, three leads out of this switch. Very simple. So we'll need to hook it up to power up here, a ground, and to our white wire that's going to the back. So that is right here. All right, so key on switch on a little blue light uh, lights up when you've got it on and if we go back here we shall see uh, where my lead is let's see what we got here a nice happy 24 volts out of our little converter all right all right with our switch set up we can now get the rest of this feed line in here um, this is another fuse, which is going to be a 10 amp fuse. So we had a 30 amp fuse going to this. Obviously, it takes a little bit more amperage to upconvert the voltage to 24. And then this is going to be a 10 amp fuse because that's all we want to run to the amp um, itself. And I've got this little board, well, for one, to protect the carpet against solder uh, drips or something like that. But basically, we're going to put this right in there against the fender well and I think it's gonna fit just fine and we'll screw down these components onto the board. We may even cover this board in some of that adhesive felt stuff that I got for the glove box project and it'll look nice and blend into the back there and look all pretty when we're done, hopefully. All right, so since I don't like delayed gratification, uh, before we set up our amp in here, we're going to get our speakers all set up I ripped out the uh, old cheap ones when I recovered my doors, but most doors are going to be the same. We've got a couple screws holding on the handle here, and then there's one in here, so we're going to have to pop out this little cup to be able to release everything. And then uh, there's often a screw right here, which mine does not have, but 
it is there on the other door. You can see it, with that little tab covering it. And then the rest of this comes off with just little plastic clips that clip into the door. So you wanna be careful when you remove this, you may wanna use a removal tool uh, to help with that so that they don't break. All right, so we've exposed our little vapor barrier. Um, this should be relatively intact, especially around the bottom. If not, you can replace it with pretty much any kind of plastic. See-through is kind of convenient because that way you can see where all the holes sort of need to go and everything. And then what you do is you buy what's called butyl tape. That's what the sticky material is, and it kind of gets everywhere, so you want to be careful with it. But um, you can just place this along here and replace this and make it all look nice. I think I will be doing that to this door when, when we get to that point because it's in much worse shape than this one. There's a big hole here but honestly this is not a big deal because it's so high. What happens is the water drains into the door from the outside and it should drain out the bottom but in the meantime we want that kind of vapor to not destroy your basically cardboard door cards. All right so this is the is this thing speaker? I have no idea what brand it is. It's something kind of crappy aftermarket and we'll be probably drilling some more holes to make our pretty new ones that are Polk uh, speakers fit. So let's get this out of here. All right, we've got the uh, leads to the speaker wired up. I decided to solder, of course, and not use these cheap little connectors that came with it. I think it's just a cleaner look and put some heat shrink on there and you're all set. And sometimes there's wiring issues. The, the wiring uh, from the car may switch positive to negative. So I'm checking out uh, these two and I put in an additional little bit of uh, slack so that it's easier to pull it back with some little blade connectors. And those did, te everything tested out correctly, so I've got my positive and my negative. And what's gonna happen is these are going to screw in to the back of the little amplifier board. Those are just little screw down um, things, and I'll basically be doing that once, and then um, we'll be all set. Any future removal of the uh, audio system will, I'll just use the blade connectors in the back. Uh, it's just a lot easier, a lot less uh, annoying. You don't need a little screwdriver. All right, all connected up in the back. And let's try it out. So key on. And got our little switch here. So, it's good, it's good, there we go, I heard something. Okay, I've got another phone here, and we're going to see, I think I've paired to this phone before. Alright, so now here it is, it's this M200 Bluetooth 5, we'll pair that. Okay, seems to be paired. And let's see, I've got some test music, copyright free. So what's this one? Well, that shows it. Um, that's not even with the sub installed. So uh, the speakers are sounding pretty good in the doors. That's pretty cool. All right, so I really can't claim to be a CAD expert, but I've got um, Fusion 360 loaded up here. This is a free tool from Autodesk uh, that you can download for personal use. 
And we've got a drawing that I've sort of painstakingly put together. So this is the area of the tombstone radio section, basically the center tombstone, and this should work for both um, the uh, original NA6 as well as, so basically 90 through 97. And we basically taken measurements and I use a couple different measuring tools, but mostly calipers uh, to get some detailed measurements of how far down from the top. This little inner green area is basically the viewing window. That's what you actually see. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a margin here. And see, it, so these little cutouts are for some plastic um, pieces that extend in um, that uh, are part of the tombstone itself. And then of course where the holes are that you can put in screws that are just gonna screw into existing holes so you don't have to modify your tombstone in any way to make this work. And then I've got uh, some two and a sixteenth inch um, larger holes for gauges. So I have my AFR gauge and my boost gauge. And then in the middle I've got my, this is my relocated window switches for the power windows. And these little tiny holes are for some uh, little switch guards, which I may or may not include. It may look a little bit crowded with those in there, so we'll have to see. And then we've got all of our holes along the bottom, which was super annoying because these holes are not even. They're different, slightly different widths. So this is the big one for the switch that turns everything on, and then these are all the knobs, the control knobs, for the little digital amplifier that goes behind here. So, um, you can do this yourself or you can download this file and make it available. Uh, but what you do is once it's in here, you'll have to export it to another tool. And I've got um, this one called DWG TrueView. And what it does is it allows you to plot out your sketch um, that you've created in, in uh, Fusion. And this one will send it to the printer and you can set it up as a, like in a one-to-one -one mode um, so that it prints out correctly. So that's what we've done here. Of course, I printed out several copies, but, and I made little holes so that I could actually test it. I can place some of my switches through the holes just to make sure. This was super annoying because the distance between here is like, you know, it's either 20 millimeters or it's 19.5 or, you know, it might be a little bit larger, like here to here is like 26. So this one's a little bit farther away than the rest of these four, but these four are not even. So those are the kinds of things you have to watch out for if you want all this to be perfectly lined up. All right, so we've got our, our template printed out. We've got it on some steel i kind of would prefer aluminum it's a little bit easier to deal with um the slider and all that stuff but um could not find any that was thick enough it was just some very thin plate i mean sheet metal uh at my local store so decided to use this found this rusty piece of <laughs> scrap in the pile and cleaned it up a bit with um a uh, grinder with a um, flap sander disc on it and um, that cleaned it up fairly quickly then I took the template cut it out and used a little bit of this glue stick to stick it down so we'll give it a little bit of time to drill I mean dry and then we're gonna drill out the holes um, we're gonna the template you'll notice has these little small holes and that's for this tool so that we can mark them a uh, the little punch tool and you can get a, an exact um, placement of your drill bit so it's not gonna you know ride ride the metal away you know that type of thing so we'll give that about 20 minutes to dry just completely it's really screws up things if this um, template falls off or moves something like that so we'll just get it give it a little bit of time to dry and then we'll punch down all these holes Really, once you get all the holes punched down, you know where they're gonna go, so it doesn't really matter if it walks, but I prefer to keep it just for reference sake. And then um, we have to cut out these little grooves for the little slits inside the um, tombstone. All right, cut out around the outside and did a little punch down with the tool here uh, on all the things. 
All right. That's looking pretty good. Save you the tedium of me getting all these little tiny things screwed in. Um, this is what it's looking like in the back. So, not too bad really. I thought it was going to be a more jumbled mess, but honestly it's not that horrible. Um, the key is to be able to shove everything back. There's some room for some of the bundles of wiring that makes it possible to pull it out this far on the left and the right, so you should be able to get that to work. Oh, it's cranking now. All right, so we got some music playing, copyright free, and you can see the uh, bass thumping. So this is super thin. It's gonna slip right back here. In fact, we'll do that. to button things back up you just have to get the uh, carpet back on here the wiring to the sub went behind the parcel shelf here and we should be all set <laughs> <laughs> 